When Apple announced the Apple Vision Pro, the first thing that came to my mind was, can I edit on this? And not with just my MacBook connected, but independently, can I edit on this device? Turns out, you can. Honestly, getting this in the mail was insanely surreal. Like I genuinely just felt like a kid waiting for the UPS driver, picking it up, unboxing it, because this isn't a product that Apple's ever made before. It's a completely different product category. First impressions, opening it up, the, the unboxing experience is like, second to none it's absolutely amazing and i think we all know that apple's really good at the presentation they're really good at making things just visually look good to get their audience excited putting these goggles on the apple vision pro is honestly one of the coolest experiences ever like your first time actually experiencing that immersive vr and obviously i've done stuff with metaquest and other vr systems so i'm familiar with it but it it just feels different with apple and they do it just in a slightly different way that makes it feel more premium and it makes it feel more real. Whoa. I see you. Oh my gosh. It's writing hello in front of me. <laughs> this is wild. Like interacting with that UI, with the display, with all these different interface items, playing around with some of the apps. I even did their immersive dinosaur interactive thing, which straight up like freaked me out. It's actually terrifying. My heartbeat was genuinely racing. And I haven't experienced that with like the Meta Quest. I just haven't gotten it to that point because I, I know it's super fake. Like it looks good, but it's just not quite there. That on the other hand, was actually insane. And the fact that that's just a demo interactive experience that Apple included with this, there's gonna be so many more things developed that makes this device even more insane. But amazing as it is on a practicality standpoint, there's still a lot of downsides. I think generally speaking, Apple makes very high quality stuff, but to be honest, as I was using this, I did feel like they kind of deceived the general public just a little bit. The experience that you have in these goggles is absolutely insane, but it's really not quite what you see in the commercials. So after the whole setup process, getting my Apple ID synced and actually just understanding how I can even use it, like tapping my fingers and looking directly at the icons, it, it, there's a little bit of a learning curve, just feeling comfortable actually wearing the goggles. And by the way, I'm referring to them as goggles because you don't put them on and have this immediate like 180 degree field of view. You put them on and you know you're wearing goggles. There's vignette here at the bottom. After a while, I, it lost its appeal, frankly. I knew I wasn't gonna wear them all day. If I had that full 180 degree view, then I could see myself wearing these for longer periods of time, but you just you just feel like you're looking at binoculars after a while. So to be honest, I was really just excited about two main things. Editing with this thing, obviously, and then using it on an airplane. I haven't flown on an airplane yet today, literally just got these, but I did edit an entire unboxing video on the goggles, again, with no MacBook attached, and I'm actually really impressed. So after I set it up, I went to the App Store, downloaded DaVinci Resolve, started using it immediately. And since we had already filmed that unboxing footage, I had Bryson actually airdrop me the single clip that I need to use to actually color and then edit inside of DaVinci Resolve. So the go-to way of actually using this system is obviously with your eyes and your hands, but you can also hook up a keyboard and a mouse or at least a trackpad. I try to hook up my Logitech MX Master 3S, which is my go-to mouse for editing and actually pretty much anything. But when I connected it via Bluetooth, it did connect and then it immediately told me that that input wasn't supported. So if you don't already like edit on a Magic trackpad, editing on this is gonna be kind of annoying and different. It was for me at least. Like I don't usually edit on my laptop with the trackpad. I'm usually at a desktop. Or if I have my laptop, I actually have an extra mouse that I travel with. So something to keep in mind that while you can absolutely edit on this thing, you have to use Apple's peripherals. So overall editing individual resolve inside of Apple Vision Pro independently, pretty good experience. I'd probably rate it like a seven out of 10. It's really not bad. I'm still gonna use my desktop to edit off of because I'm just more used to that system. It's less tiring on my eyes. I don't feel like I'm looking through goggles, but it still totally works. I also hooked up my MacBook Pro, the M3, and used the screen share feature. That personally, I think was a bit better of an experience, mainly because I could use the mouse that I wanted to use. All my files and assets and things that I normally use to edit were already there. And then unfortunately with this system, you actually can't have multiple screens connected. So I can't like project my MacBook screen and then duplicate that and have side screens. I can only project it once 
And then I can use Apple Vision Pro to add on Safari on the side or my messages or something else. So kind of limited, it's, it's not quite as exciting as I thought it was gonna be. Like if you could have just a monitor window and then your timeline window right next to it, that would be really nice. Obviously you can make that screen really big and you can switch all those different windows around if you'd like to. But I don't know, it was fun for like maybe 30 minutes. And then after that, I was like, I just don't see myself using that. There's a couple things I had a hard time with, actually. One of the main ones was accidentally actually selecting things on the screen because for whatever reason, I tend to just like bring my hands together and I talk with my hands quite a bit. And so while I was editing or while I was just holding something and I happened to be looking at something on the Apple Vision Pro on that fake display, I'd accidentally click something. And so that would happen when I was editing. It got kind of annoying. Different windows would pop up. So something to keep in mind. And then because your eyes are looking directly at these displays, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration, like an RGB split, essentially, that you can't see in these screen recordings that I'm showing you right now, but it does make it kind of hard to actually see everything on your screen at once. So wherever I'm looking, it's gonna be fairly crisp, like text or whatever it might be, but then it slowly gets more blurry and more blurry. And then you see that chromatic aberration kind of start to happen just a little bit around the edges right there. And so my peripherals actually don't work the same when I'm wearing these. Like when you're editing at your computer and you're on the timeline and then you want to switch over to Spotify, you have another window open and you want to play a song, you might glance over at that window, but then you can see in your peripherals where your mouse is going and click play and then keep editing or do whatever you need to do. With this, you just, you can't really do that because you can't see your peripherals as well as you'd like to. And if you're not using like a physical keyboard and a mouse, you have to look exactly at the thing that you want to select or it's not gonna work. So obviously the technology is super cool and the fact that you can even do that to begin with is amazing. But from a practicality standpoint, for me at least, it's just gonna take some getting used to, and frankly, I might not ever get used to it. Storyblocks provides unlimited downloads of diverse, high-quality media at one predictable subscription cost. So you can say goodbye to expensive paperclip pricing. With Storyblocks, you can easily add pre-made motion graphics like title animations, overlays, logo reveals, and more to enhance the production value of your videos. You can choose from thousands of professional pre-made templates for your favorite editing programs. And now DaVinci Resolve templates are also available inside of Storyblocks. Templates are a great way to speed up your workflow so that you can focus on the content. Everything you download from Storyblocks is 100% royalty free with no restrictions on where you can actually distribute your finished projects. And content is always refreshed regularly so you can always be looking through a freshly sifted media library. We use Storyblocks to create a lot of the motion graphics that you see in our YouTube videos, like this title animation. And many of the sound effects and music that we use in our videos also come from Storyblocks. So to get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to storyblocks.com slash full-time filmmaker or click the link in the description. So obviously this tech is super new to everyone and I have my own personal questions and things I wanted to learn and figure out with this device, but I also asked you guys if you had any questions. Edward asked me, does it feel too heavy on your head for long editing sessions and how is color accuracy? So to answer your first question, it's pretty freaking heavy. And because it's so front heavy, your neck is constantly like moving this way. It's really tiring, I'm not gonna lie. In terms of color accuracy though, honestly, I'm insanely impressed. Like it performed way better than I thought it was going to. I opened up that window virtually in front of me. I did a color space transform. I converted that S-Log3 basically to Rec. 709, added some HDR, did some color grading, used one of my LUTs. And the way I was seeing it inside of Apple Vision Pro it looked basically the same as it did on my computer. So I know that's not like a very scientific way of looking at it, like it looked the same, but I'm telling you, it's extremely accurate for what it is. Like if there's differences, they're marginal. Rodney asked, is it nice for on the go editing, having 60 inch screens on you? Honestly, this might be a heck of a lot bigger than 60 inches. It felt like I was sitting on like the second row of a movie theater. Like that's how big I can make that window. On the go, um, I'm not sure. I think what will actually be really cool to try is pulling out my laptop, editing on the airplane, but wearing Apple Vision Pro while I'm doing it. I feel like one of the most distracting parts of actually being on an airplane and watching a movie or editing or doing any sort of work is the environment around you is actually pretty distracting. Super loud, you have babies crying, you have people talking, you have the captain coming on the speaker. Like it, it's just a distracting environment, but if you can put those on and limit those distractions, I think that's actually a really great scenario. Hunter asked, how useful will Vision Pro actually be 
for creators. We, we honestly just have to wait and see how this all plays out. Currently, in my opinion, just in the experience that I've had over the last few hours using this, there's just not a ton that you can do as like a content creator. Like you can make content with the product because it's so new. But again, from a practical standpoint, there's really not anything that will make you a better creator just because you have this. It's a little bit of a novelty. Like for example, I wouldn't wear this on set with a client. Like it, it just wouldn't really do any good. And frankly, I think it's really weird. Maybe in like 20 years when that's way more common to have a screen on your face or when this is small enough that it's not a huge distraction. Like wearing this with a client, holding a camera, filming, there would be convenience, I guess, if you put like your notes, a window of notes around you or like a reference video or something else so that you could shoot and then turn around and check your notes and then go back to shooting. Like. I can see that actually being kind of useful, but it's just so weird right now that I, I really don't think anyone's gonna do that for a while. Like you guys remember Google Glass, similar concept, but it was just a small piece of glass and a camera right here that Google developed. This was like 10 years ago. Super cool piece of tech. No one really used it because it was just too much. And if that thing was too much, this is definitely too much. So again, that might change, but as of right now, it's not gonna make you a better content creator. David asked, how's the lag and the response time? Honestly, that uh, from a scientific technical standpoint, I don't know exactly what the delay is, but I didn't notice anything. Like typing on the keyboard was really quick. Even using my trackpad to navigate around the whole thing, really intuitive. So as far as I can tell, very, very minimal delay. Someone asked, is it dependent on Wi-Fi? No, as far as I can tell, no, you're not dependent on Wi-Fi. Obviously, if you want to browse the internet or download anything, then yeah, you need Wi-Fi, but no, you could edit without it just fine. Christian asked, how is the sound design? So I'm actually really impressed with the spatial audio that they've included in this. Something I noticed is that when I was actually editing inside of DaVinci Resolve, and then I had like Spotify open in my browser, and I clicked play to listen to that music, it was on this side of me, and it was actually only playing in this year. I'm sure there's a setting where I could turn that off, but I found that kind of interesting. And when I was editing the actual video, inside of DaVinci Resolve. Since the window was right in front of me, the audio was coming right at me head on. So overall, it sounded pretty good. I didn't put on headphones, but if you put on AirPods, AirPod Maxes, whatever that might be, the audio is gonna sound identical as if you were just editing on your MacBook. If you're trying to do like really accurate sound design and like make sure you can hear everything perfectly, doing dialogue, mixing with music, I haven't done that, but I, I don't feel like that's gonna be the best solution, like using these built-in speakers. So again, I would definitely recommend like AirPods Max. Jennings asked, how does it handle 4K 120 10 bit footage? Did not actually try that, but we did do 4K 24 at 10 bit and actually there was no lag at all. So for some really basic editing, it did a really good job. Well, if you were to add on layers and different effects as much as you can, at least in the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve, then you probably would experience a little bit of lag. I'd be really surprised if you didn't, but for very simple edits, it did a great job. David asked really simply just, can it speed up your workflow? So speed up your workflow? No, probably not. I think it might enhance your workflow, if anything, and augment that. But I don't think it's actually gonna like speed it up. I think the only thing that would speed it up are peripherals that actually make editing faster. Unfortunately, as intuitive as this product is, looking and tapping and whatever on the timeline, like it, it's not fast. You need to have a keyboard and a trackpad. So frankly, if anything, it kind of slows you down. Someone asked, does it get hot? Uh, yeah, it actually kind of does. It doesn't get like super hot, but it does get warm. And actually my forehead hurt too, like pushing that up against your face for a long time. I had a little bit of a headache after. Cody asked, measure your eye fatigue. I'm actually surprised I, my eyes weren't quite as tired as I thought they were gonna be at the end of using this thing. I had it on for probably like four hours total without taking it off. And you'd think that your eyes would be kind of bloodshot and just really, really tired but they weren't. So I'm not sure why, because I feel like when I wear the MetaQuest for too long, my eyes do hurt. But on this, that wasn't the case. It might be because the displays are probably a higher resolution. I just didn't feel that fatigue. But again, four hours, probably my limit. And I think that's a really, really long time to have two screens right here in front of your eyes. And the last question from Sergio, is it really worth $3,000 for a new editing setup? If you are strictly getting this as an editing setup, no. It's not. I think it's an insanely cool piece of tech, but this is not an editing machine as of right now. <laughs> maybe if more functionality is brought to it, and maybe not even this generation, it might be gen two or gen three of this product, 
but currently as it stands, I don't think it's worth it as an editing setup. And you might have already known that answer. I think more specifically, a lot of you want to know, is it a good companion with your existing editing setup? Like, can you pair those really well? And I would say yes and no. There's pros and cons like we've talked about in this video. I think if you want a really big virtual display, it's a great way to go, but definitely consider the downsides of your neck hurting, wearing these goggles, and some of the unfortunate things that you just have to deal with when you're trying to look around the screen and you can't see everything clearly. I think I was most excited about the productivity aspect of this product, like how I could actually do more in a day with this thing. I didn't know exactly how I was gonna be able to do that, but I imagined virtually having my apps open would somehow help me do that. And as of right now, I, I just don't think it's quite there. Super excited, obviously, to have the product. Watching movies on this is gonna be fun. New games that are developed are gonna be really cool. If the editing gets smoother and it's easier to do that, that will be really exciting and really fun. But currently I kind of have mixed feelings, I'm gonna be honest. So this is obviously just the first of several videos I imagine that will release over the next few weeks. We filmed and edited this entire thing in one day. So bear with me, because obviously these are just mostly my first impressions and my experience doing some very basic editing on this thing. And if you're an aspiring content creator, you wanna make videos full time, you wanna start a production company, you wanna make YouTube videos, go check out Full-Time Filmmaker, it's the ultimate online film school. We have over 30,000 full-time students, an incredible community of content creators. So if you want to learn how to make videos that stand out and attract high paying clients, go check that out. That's pretty much it though, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any further questions, please let me know. Just...